Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. Here we are in the studio to talk at Long Island. Here with me is senior correspondent Scott Morell. Scott, how are you today? I am doing great. I'm so looking forward to 2017 with uh, excitement and uh, peace and fulfillment and i really believe 2016 was a rotten year so and i think a lot of people feel that way so 2017 let's go awesome going across the atlantic ocean as always is our senior correspondent uh the lovely ria Bo. ria how are you today hi guys hi lovely listeners thank you for joining us i'm fine today in the uk it's cold uh, I don't know what is in Fahrenheit, but we're about minus four, five, six, seven at night kind of thing. So it's pretty cold here in the UK. It's keep warm and everything. But otherwise, I'm sipping a coffee ready for a good show. And today's show is about the topic is just a topic show. No news is is the Constitution under attack? So that's what today's topic is for anybody that's just joining us and wants to stay and is interested. So I've got a short list here, a very simple list of of the sort of 10 uh, listings in the Constitution to question, are they under attack? So that's basically what it's about. And myself and the guys here, we've not really caught up over Christmas and New Year and everything. So it's just a quick catch up. Then we'll get into the nuts and the bolts of it. But until then... Back to you, Dean. We appreciate it. And before we uh, before we go any further, I just want to wish uh, you and Scott uh, a happy and a healthy New Year, and all our listeners out there a happy and healthy New Year to everybody. I expect it to be a, a great uh, 2017. And uh, I also want to wish uh, a very happy birthday to Ria as well. Happy birthday, Ria. You're very kind. Thank you. I mean, I'm, you know, in my 20s, I've still got a lot of learning to do, but work in progress, Dean. (laughs) Well, my new year, you know, I had a great uh, couple of days, as people see on the show's Instagram and on and on the show's Facebook. Uh, Sharon and I had a lovely couple of days in our one of our favorite islands, St. Martin. But unfortunately, I'm a little bit under the weather here. And thank God this uh, subjects uh, very much in our senior correspondent here in the studio, Scott Morell. Uh, but a little bit under the weather with a cold, uh, whether it's the air conditioning or the plane or just a good time down in, in, in the Caribbean. Uh, just a, a little bit of a cold today. But otherwise, uh, this is a great subject. Is the Constitution under attack? You know, are our freedoms under more serious attack than ever before? You know, we've got this document uh, that's been created uh, over 200 years ago, um, you know, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, how could we, uh, how could we keep our government from becoming another tyrannical, a body like a communist, uh, China or North Korea, Scott, I'm going to throw it back over to you, uh, to, uh, continue on this subject is the constitution under attack. Well, I think the, uh, there's a great potential of the constitution being under attack and i say this in a very objective way it's the way um trump not only campaigned but has been tweeting that's very disturbing we're not supposed to decipher a policy with 140 characters that's not the way a president see uh should run it's okay if he wants to send out greetings or um compliments of so of, of sort but to create policy that you have to decipher what not means or nice um is really both confusing to the world dangerous and quite uh you know quite truly um very very scary um i think there are a lot of areas that the constitution um, might be damaged right now or under attack. I'm not going to go over each one because I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, the first one I would like to talk about is the, emolu- the emolument clause, which prevents um, 
uh, foreign leaders uh, from foreign countries presenting any gifts to uh, government officials of the United States. And there was a reason for that. We were new to democracy and uh, we wanted to make sure that we cannot be corrupted and other countries cannot uh, change our democracy. Uh, is very thoughtful and it really withstood the, the, uh, the stance of time. So what we have now is we have a president-elect that has a potential massive, it would be an understatement, conflicts of interest. And I think for him to have a successful presidency, he must, even though not required, he must, or else will be questioned, release his taxes. Because every single thing he's going to do, every policy, people are going to say, is he doing it for his own financial benefit or is he doing it for the country? And um, from day one, the second he's sworn in, he's in violation of the emoluments laws. He's in violation of the Constitution. As we know, he has a, a holding, and he is the sole owner of the new Washington, D.C. hotel. We know for a fact that people from Qatar and other places are going and, uh, you know, staying at their at his uh, hotel and doing affairs and then telling him, well, it was a, you know, your service was wonderful. The uh, breakfast buffet was great. And, um, you know, how could that not affect uh, Donald Trump? Also, Donald Trump will be the landlord and the, and the uh, tenant at the same time. That's a, a complete conflict of interest. So instead of going into all of them, why don't we start that discussion there? What's, uh, what's a good way for us to go and uh for people that are just listening to the show for the first time, what is so great about our show and when we do shows of this type of format on topics and subjects that affect uh, not only the United States of America, but uh, worldly, is that we have, we're fortunate to have Rhea over in the UK. She's located in Milton Keynes. And uh, Rhea, why don't, you, why don't you give some perspective or uh, comments in regard to what uh, Scott has uh, shared and brought up at this point? Yeah, sure. I mean, the Trump thing, I think, oh, the realms of speculation are difficult because Scott has a point. If if, he's, if if anybody's not doing it lawfully, it needs to be dealt with because it needs to be lawful. Um, but it does seem like there's one law for one and one for another, sort of looking in from the outside, which is a bit dangerous. But actually, until he's um, inaugurated, if, if at that point he's not got it right, I'm I think they're just going to be coming out of every mainstream news, uh, mainstream media news outlet to say he's done this and he's done that. So personally, in terms of the Constitution, I've got the list of the Constitution here and I was going to kind of deal with what is rather than what could be. So that's where my thoughts are. But until then, back to you, Dean. I, uh, I appreciate it, Rhea. I, my, my feelings are with what Scott went over. Um, this has been going on. You know, this has been it's, I don't think this just applies to Donald Trump as the president elect. I think uh, I think your issue that you brought up has, has this has been going on. This has been going on for since, years since the beginning of the Constitution. Since the beginning of the Constitution, and this document, this paper, was two hundred plus years ago. So, but it know. made but it made sense at the time, and it still makes sense. And there's no person that is more entangled because of his business dealings as Donald Trump. We've never had. This is the first time that we've had a a, a presidents like this. Right. Uh, never before. So it's it is it is very very unusual. And uh, you know, he campaigned on that he's. Uh, He's going to beat by his own drum and and do what he wants to do. Yeah, um, it, you know, it, it's more than the emoluments clause. Um, you know, he wants to put, um, he wants to attack freedom of speech. He wants to make it unlawful to burn a flag. Uh, remember, the freedom of speech is um, the purpose of it, the beauty of it, of the four founders is that um, we don't have a single arbiter to say, you can't say this word, Dean, or, or Rhea can't say that word. You could say any word. OK, whether it's um, um, uplifting or repulsive, OK, because there should not be an arbiter for that. And he's already made comments again. Rhea's right. He's not in, in power yet, but there, there are concerns that he wants to throw um, uh, reporters in jail and he wants to reconstitute the libel laws. That is in, in direct violation of the, of the First Amendment. 
I mean, you heard uh, uh, Vice President Biden this week uh, made a comment uh, right at Trump. He uh, he said it's time for him to grow up already. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, Rhea, let's go back over to you. Do you want to have more discussion on the First Amendment? Um, well, on, on the comments that you've made. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I definitely do. Um, the Trump thing, I mean, it is speculation at this point until he goes in and the law can be applied as it should be to anybody. But I disagree with Scott. Not We can no longer, well, Americans can no longer just say anything because signed into the act, the NDAA, was the Global Engagement Center, which is about censorship. So that was like that, but is no more under the current administration. That's been signed off. That's a done deal. So censorship and the First Amendment. I've got the First Amendment here. Let me just read out a short version of it. Is what I've got here. It says, Congress must protect the rights of freedom of speech. Well, that's kind of gone with the Global Engagement Center, uh, along with the freedom of press. That's also sort of on the way out. Freedom of assembly, not sure about that. And the freedom of petition. Congress cannot create a national religion. So the First Amendment is under attack from what it looks like from the outside, from all angles. And on the Joe Biden thing, on his comment on Trump's tweet, I think you're right about the tweets. I'm not sure that's the way to go about things, but I guess it is what it is. But he's saying that um, as I looked into the documents for the Russian hacking thing, which is all over your mainstream, isn't it? Um, I managed to get down here. Let me just find it. I wasn't sort of prepped for this because I've only just got in the door. But let me just open a document here. And I want to read you something regarding that Russian hacking incident and a few details. I'm just scrolling down here that uh, stuck out really quickly. Um, when Joe Biden commented to Trump about, you know, grow up and uh, believe the intelligent agencies on terms of the Russian uh Hacking, that's correct, isn't it, Scott? Yes. Okay, so it's what we've got. When you look into it, there's a, as soon as you read the report of the Russian hacking, this is what is immediately evident. Uh, the disclaimer at the top says this. This report is, provi is provided, brackets, as is, for informational purposes only. Stop. The Department of Homeland Security, brackets, DHS, does not provide any warranties of any kind regarding any information within this document. So they've done a disclaimer from the get go. I looked a bit further and the FBI have come out along with of them. None of the 17 agencies looked into the hacking. It was actually outsourced to a company called CrowdStrike. Mm. So. Right. So it's not when he says grow up and believe the um, 17 security agencies, none of them have looked into it. The whole lot came from a company called CrowdStrike with that disclaimer on the header. So that's really different than 17 agencies looking at. I'm sure they're probably bit busy monitoring people, Scott. But at the end of the day, that is out. That is where they're saying that information come from, not from the intelligence agencies, Scott. How say you? Okay, this is how I would respond to that. First of all, we all know that there are no such things as absolutism except death and taxes. So you have to, as a president, take all the information in and as a president, use your instincts and your wisdom to make correct decisions, just like uh, JFK did with the Bay of Pigs. Um, for him to first say that he believes Julian Assange, who is an accused, accused rapist and a theft of uh, information over his own intelligence agency is, in my opinion, extremely disrespectful. There's already pushed back um, the CIA, uh, the NSA, the FBI, um, off the record has have been very discouraged and they're hoping that people do not walk out uh, from him. The only way um, he's going to be able to make good decisions, Donald Trump, is to listen with an open mind to those 17 intelligence agencies. When you um, provide a service, I was a caterer, I might have bought the dessert, for instance, but I had to make a decision which dessert 
I bought, did I buy, buy the uh, apple pie from Bakery 1, Bakery 2, Bakery 3? Bakery 3 might have been $10 a pie, Bakery 2, 5, and, and, and going down the list. I decided to buy from Bakery, uh, you know, the most expensive. Um, and so that's my decision. Whoever does it, it really doesn't make a difference as long as the person or the entity feels comfortable through their decision making that they are the proper professionals to do it. Frankly, if they outsourced Apple or Google, I'd be just as happy as long as it's under their auspices. So I don't think, I think there's a um, uh, a distinction without a difference on this. Um, so I, I, I'm a little skeptical about that. When 17 agencies all agree uh, beyond any doubt, uh, sorry, or beyond reasonable doubt, they actually say any doubt, which is higher than a murder standard, that they were behind it. I think what a responsible person that's still not in office has to say, okay, I heard that. Um, I like to hear a little bit more about it, but you don't go the other way and say it's not happening. It can happen. You really honestly look like a fool. Um, if you're the only one standing and your own Republican party is saying, no, you're wrong. That's my thoughts about it. Rhea, Rhea do you want to comment or can I make a comment? Scott, you, you got to realize that we're in times now that we're going to see the most unorthodox unorthodox presidency <laughs> no doubt uh from what we saw over the past year and uh i i th listen uh, i think uh, in the end as time goes on um i this is not about me being pro trump or, or against trump sure uh, but uh even even some of his enemies and people from the democratic side uh, I believe uh, between his vice president elect pence and uh he's putting together a pretty impressive a group of people, I think, uh, for his cabinet positions that I think uh, I don't I, I think you might hear this is typical Donald Trump, just the way he is and the way he acts out and he speaks. But the reality of what's going to be executed upon what's going to be followed through. I don't think, uh, you know, as I say, uh, I use the word vomitosis. Um, <laughs> right. I'm not so sure. And, and you're even hearing things, promises that he made. That I wish you know that well, I, the that Mexican I, that, wall, the I Mexican mean, wall. That's so, a classic. So you know, it's just his personality and the way he is. But uh, do these things really happen as time goes on? We will see. And I think we also have to, um, if all these things, what he promised, um, he uh, completely switches. Um, it, it, they feel like bait and switch, and especially his tweets. I think it's going to come to a point where, okay, we heard it, we're done with it. It doesn't matter until we see the action because the words won't matter anymore because he flips on literally everything he says. Right. Okay. But well, that, that's getting off the subject. I like to get, more, and I think it's a great point, Tina. I like to get more with Rhea on more of the subject that she has brought up with uh, other uh, attacks the on the Constitution. The Constitution being under attack. Yeah. Um, Rhea, okay. let's, let's go back over to you. Okay, so I completely sort of disagree with you, Scott. An approach is an approach and is personal. Just to wrap it up. <laughs> That's not unusual, by the way, Rhea. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're starting 2017 the way we ended 2016. <laughs> I, I love this. I want to see this go on here. I'm sure I you think do. it's great. And I think the uh, I think the audience and the listeners want to hear it, too. So it's good that you guys differ. We love each other. Go at it, Rhea. Oh, we do. We do. But we have a differing opinion. And I've sort of some bunch called CrowdStrike uh, have apparently said Russians are hacking. And that's good enough to nearly start World War Three. But hey, whatever takes your fancy. Right. Let's go. Let's go on to the first one again. So. The freedom of speech, clause one, and the freedom of press. Well, there's a law just gone in from Mr. Potato Head saying that we, uh, you can't just say what you want. And if you do, they're going to take it down. So that is not freedom of press, I believe, is it? Who's, uh, excuse my ignorance. Who's Mr. <laughs> Potato Head? <laughs> I think I was bought. Up. I think I was bought that by my mom and dad when I was I a little kid, Mr. Potato Head. It was a Toys R Us on aisle that? three. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I don't know if Rhea had that when she was a, a, a little girl over in the, the United Kingdom in Milton Keynes. I don't know if they. I don't know if they gave that as, as gifts. <laughs> what is Mr. Potato Head? Please engage Go ahead, us. Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, love it. Oh, right. OK, so back back on topic, right? Freedom of pre press. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who is Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> Who do you think it is? I don't know. We don't know, Rhea. We really don't. We're looking at each other. That's why I wanted Scott in the studio today. It's Obama. Oh! oh. 
Well, uh, to, just to be uh, a little bit crude, it's the wrong color. But that's, that's, why I, that's one of the reasons I didn't want Scott doing the show from Long Island City, New York today. Right. I wanted him here in this to talk at Long Island studio. Okay. <laughs> because if you saw his faces when you said Mr. Potato Head... <laughs> But but listen, that's okay. uh, that, that's so, what so, makes that's what makes us all unique in the two different cultures we live in here. So so, so now that I understand this, Obama, what are you referring to about him taking away some of the uh, freedom of speech rights? Well, the NDAA Act has been signed for the uh, Global Engagement Center to censor press, isn't it? I'm not aware of that, to be quite frank. We spoke about it in the other show. Well, if you um, could, if you if you could, if you could enlighten uh, Scott and uh, and the audience a little bit more on that, that was, rear. that was a few eggnogs and tequila uh, be, <laughs> during the during the vacation break. Please give me a mulligan. Okay, so I was following the story. I got I picked up on it first when it had gone through Congress and the House and was waiting to be signed. Oh yeah, they've tacked on the back end of the NDAA Act, National Defense Act, that they're creating a an organization, a department called. The Global Engagement Center, which is led by the State Department to censor the press. And you said, I believe, that will last 24 hours and that will go to the Supreme Court, if I remember. You're, you're exactly correct. Thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. Scott, if your memory doesn't get better, I'm going to make sure and try to make an offer to Megan Kelly to come to the Dean Blackman <laughs> show instead of, instead of NBC, unless you uh, unless you remember these things. Can I ask you where you stored your, <laughs> can I ask you where you stored your $20 million? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, no, I do remember that. And so my question is, um, was it signed into law? And if it was signed into law, I suspect that the Supreme Court will overturn it. So what has changed? Uh, nothing, well, no, that is, an, we're talking about an attack on the Constitution. I believe that's a, an attack on the Constitution, freedom of speech and freedom of press. They've, in, they've engaged, Obama has signed that act. Oh, okay, say. okay. So I would say, would you agree that is an attack on freedom of speech and freedom of press? Absolutely. So that's not a Trump thing. That's nope. a Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You got me on an agreement. I don't believe it's... Uh, Fair, and I think it'll be overturned, but I agree that is an attack. Okay, and they also signed in for state sponsorship. They sacked the Board of Governors. Well, not sacked them. They've, well, they have. They got rid of the nine people that controlled the state-sponsored media, and now they've just took it down to one person to edit. Uh, we spoke about the editing. To edit what the state-sponsored stuff does as well. So that First Amendment is is properly under attack. Wow. Moving on quickly, as I read through one, two, three, and four, um, is what I'm picking up is this, uh, uh, the, the Constitution is to protect the people from the government. Do you get that from it? Yes, I, I do too. Okay, so I sort of didn't know that. I, uh, the government cannot, uh, this is number three. The government cannot send soldiers to live in a private home without the permission of the owner. Number four, the government cannot get a warrant. So it's loads of telling the people what the government can't do. And I loved number 10. Well, there's due process. Yeah, no, totally. But I'm just saying that it's telling the people what the government is not allowed to do. Oh, okay. So it's... it's Keep an eye on the government. Number 10 says anything that the Constitution does not say Congress can do should be left up to the states or to the people. So we're in. So, well, you guys or whoever is within their constitutional 10th right to challenge is telling us, telling us to challenge the, the likes of the Global Engagement Center and the like. So. According to the 10th, I'm pleading the 10th by trying to protect the Constitution, guys. Back to you, Dean. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I think it's important to really say what the 10th is, Rhea, because I, I think there might be even listeners on this show that, uh, you know, I'm sure there's millions of people that ho have no idea what each one of uh, the amendments are in the Constitution. And, and why it exists. So I think uh, I think this issue of, of number 10 is an important one. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's important to read what that amendment is. Uh, can I uh, do I have you guys permission to read that? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, the 10th amendment 
was included in the Bill of Rights to further define the balance of power between the federal government and the states. The amendment states that the federal government has only those powers specifically granted by the Constitution. These powers include the power to declare war, Mm -hmm. to collect taxes, to regulate interstate business activities and others that are listed in the articles or in subsequent constitutional amendments. Any power that is not listed, says the 10th Amendment, left to the states or the people. While there is no specific list of what these reserve powers may be, the Supreme Court has ruled that laws affecting family relations, commerce that occurs within states' own borders, and local law enforcement activities are among those specifically reserved to the states or the people. Wow. Make me understand that one a little bit more, Scott, because that one might be under... Uh, under attack. Well, okay, that's a heavy that that Tenth is. Amendment, and that's why I want Rhea. That's why I wanted to read it to the audience because I'll bet you that there are lots of Americans that uh, that really have no idea of what each amendment states and why you know what it means and and why it exists. So that number ten is uh, it's big. It's, it's big, Scott. <laughs> Well, um, you know, that has always been a battle in the United States between states' rights and federal government rights. And that's really an ideological um, battle, basically, between the Democratic Party and the GOP. And GOP is more for states' rights. But where it gets a little tricky um, is in some overarching principles. For instance, there should be no religious test um and uh no interference from any government that state or um federal um for any american there should be no prohibition and that's what we um settled on when we left uh, uh europe and uh trump uh absolutely tried he tried to weasel out of it later on but create a religious test for the muslim uh community um which is completely unconstitutional now he could have said well he has the authority to uh uh ban immigration but uh and 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 has authority but he would have to put a good reason for it he can't put the broad stroke and he was doing the broad stroke where someone um um a muslim from indonesia in a in a town that you know barely has you know, electricity they would be a danger uh more than someone from sweden um so it really depends on how far you go but that's another um area that i think has been under attacked and it's it, and it is a question that is the federal government and so i think what what you're bringing out dean is that there 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 has always been a battle between the federal government and and states rights mm-hmm. and and i think it's a good point yeah i think that that amendment's a big one and it's uh it's very confusing and and there's a lot there that uh this balance of power of of the government versus state power let's go back over to rio yeah i'll just read out the simple one dean um because it is kind of easier to understand in lock stock the tenth i've got here is Anything that the Constitution does not say Congress can do should be left up to the states or to the people. So I read that and think, right, if we catch these dodgy people doing things like, well, for a start, getting rid of the freedom of press and freedom of speech, then it's in the 10th. It says, look, we've got to stand up and say something about it. Am I reading that correctly, do you think? I think you are. Well, who stands up, the, the, the state or the federal government? No, it says all to the people. Um, yes, yeah, so, so what you're saying, if uh, they're putting prohibitions, the, gov- the federal government is putting prohibitions, you're saying the state can overrule that? Is that what you're saying? Or the people? No, I'm saying, it, yeah, the people can stand up, make yes. a noise, assemble according to the first, petition according to the first, and try and get back the freedom of press and freedom of speech because that's under infringement and it has been with the spying agencies and everything collecting all the data as well isn't it Um, so like i said i read it i see the bit on the end i'll read it again anything that the constitution does not say congress can do should be left up to the states 
or to the people. Well, I'm the people. I know I'm not American, but let's say I am. Um, I'm the people and I'm saying, right, we need to make some noise because these lot are up to no good infringing the freedom of press and the freedom of speech. And when you infringe that, they can get up to all sorts of things. That's where my thoughts are, Scott. Well, I'm curious. I don't know all the amendments. I, I wonder if some of the amendments are in contradiction of other amendments. That would be something that I would really be interested in in knowing because there are definitely civil rights amendments and uh, uh, protections under the law for freedom of speech and religious tests. And I don't know if which one comes. Is it the chicken or the egg? Are there subsequent um amendments that oh, overrule yeah. that I, i'm not sure it's just a question i'd like to ask uh, you and the audience well I'm, I'm happy to answer the chicken and the egg the egg come first sweetie <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's before cool. the potato head huh? <laughs> <laughs> you like the potato head right yeah because because i watch the laws and stuff and what's being passed um you know, infringement of rights like disabled people getting RDIF chips put in them, which has gone through Congress with overwhelming support and the things like that. And the thing that I got from reading this sort of brief outline of the Constitution is it is to inform the people, to tell them what the government shouldn't be doing. And obviously the, the way that the um, Constitution was formed was to overthrow a dodgy government, wasn't it? Scott? Um Yes. Um, I'm not quite sure of the mechanism how to do that, though. So let's say the people of every state is having a problem with uh, the freedom of speech. What is their recourse to um, go against the government? Is it going through the courts or is it by revolution? Well, no, normally it would be like what we're doing here or what certainly I, well, no, we're trying to do here is bring up the fact that the freedom of speech and the freedom of press are, are to, we're always there to keep an eye on things and make it publicly known if they were up to no good. So by oppressing the freedom of speech, my or the American people's, sorry, I'm English, obviously, but uh, the American people's 10th Amendment is, it says, to the people. It's saying people get up and do something about it. But they can't say anything because they've oppressed freedom of press and freedom of speech. So, no, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, so what you're saying, the pre freedom of speech and press is empowered to the people to protect them from the overarching government doing nefarious things. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. I got you. And I agree with you. So that's the First Amendment under attack on two accounts. And there's four accounts in it. I'll read the first again. Congress must protect the rights of freedom of speech, freedom of press freedom of assembly and freedom of petition congress cannot create a national religion so really the the recourse um going in on my 10th which i'll read the 10th again anything that the constitution does not say congress can do should be left up to the states or the people and we the people then by recourse go back to the first which is congress and say hey congress you weren't supposed to let mr potato head sign that off mm. And now we all know who Mr. Potato Head is. <laughs> so so uh, would Congress then have to have a two-thirds majority to overrule his signing or, or his executive order? How would that work? Well, however, whatever the mechanics are okay. of Congress. Sure. But the point is, it's telling me in black and white here, as the people, you go, the people should go to Congress to make the case that this thing has been signed off and is breaching not only the first freedom of speech, freedom of press, also the tenth, which is the people to get up and do something about it. Well, you know, it's interesting, something that came up in the news, I think yesterday, maybe you've heard of it in the UK, that Congress plans on uh, repealing federal funding for Planned Parenthood, which has done amazing things for women. And um, they claim that none of their money goes directly to abortions. And out of the 100% spending, only 3% goes to abortions. And they say they put it into a different bucket, if you will. Um, you know, they might all pass that, but the backlash um, they have not seen coming. Remember, women are the majority here. Um, Clinton did win the popular votes. And uh, so there's no mandate. 
even though Trump is the fully elected president, and I, I agree with that. But um, the backlash to every single congressman is going to be vicious, and I just don't see that happening. So it's kind of interesting how politics works. You could run the government, but um, the people will have the final say. And I think you will, by doing something like that, you will see people coming together that you've never seen before from all stripes, Democrats and Republicans, um, uh, people from the working class, from the rural areas, and they need these vital uh you know, women's treatments, uh, right. you know, preventive care and things like that. And it's going to be a problem. What I, do agree, you think, I agree with you. I agree with you, Scott. The the backlash on that uh, with what you just described is going to be enormous. Eno- enormous. Rhea, what do you think? Okay, here's the problem. Yes, it's a problem. Of course it is. And I agree with you, Scott. But the bigger issue is going to be this. Let's say you're a, a mother and this affects you. You go on to social media to tell people this problem. And then the Global Engagement Centre says, oh, no, you don't. That's what lies. That freedom of speech and freedom of press of the press lies underneath all the issues. So when you go through the problem solving mechanics, the first thing you do is go to voice an opinion publicly. You're not going to be able to do it because you're going to get shut down. So Rhea, so, Rhea, so Scott, Rhea I, feels Rhea feels that mother will be censored and shut down. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose her on this one because just by using her logic, um, okay, so that uh, National Defense Act um, uh, has given federal government power, but you've also said that the people really have the power of the freedom of press. So what's going to happen? There will be a clash. The ultimate decision maker on that clash. Uh, according to the Constitution, is the Supreme Court. So at the end of the day, when there is that clash and the federal government says, hey, you can't do that, it's going to go immediately to the Supreme Court. And if you're right, Rhea, that is unconstitutional what they did based on if it's not mentioned, uh, you know, you can't you can't infringe on the people or the state's rights. It seems to me if a straight constitutionalist would uh uh, you know, ban that. And that'll be the end of it. So this might be just a very short-term problem that brings it right to the Supreme Court. Is is that your thought that could happen? No, not at all, because now that the, now that the Global Engagement Centre is, once it's mobilised, the lady that wants to bring the problem, you're not going to know because nobody's going to hear about it because it will get taken down. Why can't they just file a, a brief at the Supreme Court? Forget about social media. They just bring it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, excuse me, can't do it. You know, you could do that, but your average parent isn't going to do that. They would usually go to their friends, their family, express yeah. their problems, and they would go on their social media, whatever book you want to go on. And, and that way of spreading the word that's uh, currently 2017, you know, that's what goes on, that nobody's going to know about it. And that's the concern. Well, I think that the heart of that concern, which you are correct, once people feel that they can no longer do these things, they're going to be very smart people that go to attorneys and there'll be a brief uh, put up to the Supreme Court to, to strike that down. So then they could use the social media down the line. So maybe initially they'll be slapped in the face. But then it says, oh, okay, we can't do this by freedom of press and freedom of speech through social media. Let's now go to the lawyers, to the Supreme Court. I think that would be the natural yeah. conclusion. Scott, I've got to agree with Rhea with what's happening regarding from the social uh, media aspect and the censorship that's going on. Uh, I think uh, the other way with lobbying, uh, you know, that there's going to be tremendous backlash. Right. That uh, that mother example that Rhea gave or anybody to try and... Uh, win on on a example that you just gave on the Planned Parenthood situation. Uh, the best result they're going to have is by going up to Capitol Hill and knocking on every senator and congressman's door and and just lobbying for them to get behind uh, a particular uh, yes, I, I would agree a with particular that. cause. That's that's the best way. That's the best way. That's the best way and the, and the, and the most likely way to succeed. I've had experience with that just in my old own business with uh, dietary supplements, where uh, the FDA fee. You know, if people would ask me who who our competitor was, uh, I'd always say it was the FDA hmm. because the FDA was always trying to regulate dietary supplements. Sure. So getting on social media wasn't going to be, even though social media 
wasn't available back in those days in the 90s. What did I do? And and other board of directors and other people from my industry is we went to we went to the Hill. We knocked on every senator and congressman's door. We met with them and uh, and fought against the FDA and supplements were never regulated. Let me ask you, uh, this is how I see it happening. I think it's a multifaceted approach. People go on, go on social media, they find out it's defunded, boom. Everyone's going to go on it. Oh, wait a minute. They're taking this down. They're not allowing us to do it. Okay, next, let's go to our local congressman. Um, they're full with lobbyists. They say, go home. The final thing is the Supreme Court. So I see a three-pronged approach that it could eventually be um, struck down. Does that make sense? Ria, back over to you. I don't see it happening. I just think you'll come up because once this global engagement center gets finds its feet and the outlines are done of what can be said and what can't be said, that issue of planned parenting is very much bless them and all that they've got to do what they've got to do but it's secondary this will cause for every issue so the process of freedom of speech to spread the word is where you've got to get it and that ndaa act that was signed needs to be unsigned or 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 struck down by the supreme court or struck down right we'll see only through the sort of as time unfolds we'll find out whether that actually happens or not. But myself, I would I would have a sort of little wager on to say that's going to be a long, long, long time before that ever happens. Myself, I just don't see it. There's going to be a bunch of stonewalling from corporates that are just not going to let you get there. It should be interesting to follow. Well, what, what, meanwhile, every yes. issue, meanwhile, every issue that does carry importance to the people may not be able to be aired in law so Mm. the law's already gone through people need to be aware of it it is a legal thing now in america that they are allowed to censor you and that is directly against the first amendment it's incredible Ria, because i could tell you that probably 99 i might even go 999 out of a thousand americans have no idea about that well all i know when their post gets taken down um, well, the post normally gets taken down for abusive language or hate speech, um, something like that, bullying, things like that, but not just... There's no directive. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's interesting about this conversation, Rhea and Scott, is that uh, there's no question about it that as you go through every single amendment of the Constitution, everyone is affected by, number one, the freedom of speech. Exactly. It is, but it that's, is. But that's the most cherished thing I think we have in the United States. It's so beautiful. It's what makes us free to be able to talk. I could talk to you and say anything and you can't, you know, there's, you could either accept it or say, get out of my house, but there's nothing, there's, there's no illegality to it. It's wonderful. Uh, uh, come on. Look what, look what went on in the presidential campaign with Donald Trump, with, oh God. Uh, with the whole thing with Muslims. So, oh my I mean, God. Uh, if he was I in, mean, Go- uh, if he was it goes in Angola, right to the heart of our uh, constitution. Yeah. If he was in Angola and Venezuela, he put, he put in jail within the first day. <laughs> But an American uh, is allowed to say those things, as disturbing as some people might have felt. He's entitled to, and I, I and I supported that. By the way, he was entitled to do it. Didn't agree, but he was entitled. Anything else, Ria? I want to talk about some social uh, etiquette sometime down uh, before the hour's up. Uh, any more uh, that you'd like to discuss about the uh, Constitution under attack that we're not aware of? No, that's it. Because you, know, you need to do your thing, Scott. In short, the message I wanted to get across is. This thing has been signed into law, and I believe it is in contradiction to the First Amendment. This NDAA Act is is now... uh, um, Obama has broke the law, and and the the government have broke the Constitution by signing in that NDAA Act. So So that's me in short. Yeah, so so what normally happens when you have two clashes, something that goes against... um, the Constitution, it always goes to the Supreme Court for the final arbiter. So we're going to see that happen. That has to happen because what you're saying is it's going directly against uh, the Constitution, a new law. The only recourse is the Supreme Court, the final arbiter, right? It kind of is because in the Constitution under number 10, it says the people should go to Congress, but it was Congress that originally sent it through to the president. Right, exactly. So it's kind of a rigged race, right? Oh, yeah. So, Rhea, this, it's gone from a board of uh, nine uh, people on, on this board that there's going to be one person doing this censorship. 
There's two acts that have been tacked on the ND, one for state-sponsored and one for non-state-sponsored, and one's particularly angled at um, social media and the internet, and that is the Global Engagement Centre directed by the State Department. So that's the first one. So if, if we went on and they didn't like what we were saying in this show now, they can take that down. Hmm. Uh, that directive that the State Department are giving the Global Engagement Centre isn't written. It's, it does say nowhere, because I've had a good read at this, it says nowhere really what you can and can't say and what is good speech and bad speech. So it's very questionable, and the people that we need to go to, to the arbiters, put it through in the first place. So I, like Scott says, will it get to the Supreme Court? I'm not going to hold my breath, Dean. So with a crystal ball, the vision, uh, where, 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 is this, where is this all look uh, two, three years from now, Ria? Well, now we move the, um, once the internet, uh, the ICANN, which is the registration, like the phone book, the directory for the internet was moved out of the United States control and was also under the First Amendment, which allowed freedom of speech. They moved it away. So the internet is no longer protected by the First Amendment, which then allows them to sign off this act to do what they need to do in terms of the internet. So I think over time, it will just become more and more censored and people know that they're under surveillance and that, you know all these stories that broke. So uh, our liberties, can you remember when I read the, um, the uh, Benjamin Franklin, what he said about security? You know, I just, what Crystal Ball says, we're going to see, well, basically, you're not going to know because you're not going to see it because they'll take it down before anybody sees it. So if you've got a mum in Connecticut that's got a problem that's saying something that the Global Engagement Centre don't like, nobody will ever see it because it will just get taken down. So basically, I would say that we'll, over a period of time, in terms of the internet and what let's call it important topics, we'll just go blind. They just won't be there anymore, Dean. Mm. You, and you don't see this uh, incoming current, this incoming administration to uh, to change this. Well, the problem, this is the way I see it. Fundamentally, is whether Clinton got in or Trump got in. No matter who got in, nothing's going to fundamentally change. And for two reasons, is the way I see it. One, you have a Federal Reserve that's responsible for printing money that is unaccountable. That's a fact. It's neither federal nor a reserve because they have a trading desk. That's not a reserve. And secondly, no one, you're not going to make the country really good unless you get rid of the industrial military complex. Mm. So if you've got people in government that are aware that the Fed is just robbing the country blind, the American economy has made more than enough money for the people, but the banksters at the top, 9.3 trillion is just a tiny bit of it. They're just robbing it out. And they have no audit. So unless you get rid of the Fed and you get rid of the take apart the industrial military complex, they're all just I think they call it peeing in the wind. Wow. Wow. Did you ever hear that, Scott, before? Nope. nope. Interesting. Very you interesting. Did ask. Yep. Very interesting, uh, Ria. All yours, Scott. I'm sorry. It's all yours, darling. Oh, you great. Your great. Credit, Scott. Yeah, it's all yours. Uh, yeah. Uh, these things happened. Uh, Oh, a few days ago, I have a good friend. I'm going to change the names to protect the innocent. Uh, I have a friend, his name, uh, we'll call him Gloose, and his father passed away, unfortunately, uh, last week. There was a shiva in the Jewish religion. Um, after someone passes away, um, people go back to the house, and friends and family go there to support and to help the grieving process. There's normally you know, Danish and coffee, and, uh, um, you know, it's just a gathering, so you're not by yourself for that first week. So they did it for two days. A lot of my friends were there. Uh, Scott said that very lightly. I've been to Shiva's, uh, Rhea, that uh, there's a lot of uh, drinking and uh, a lot of buffeting, a, a lot of food. Isn't that more you Irish? It, you said it more, more, you said more it, Irish? <laughs> no. Uh, Jews have coffee. <laughs> no. Irish have uh, booze. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there is a lot of uh, food. I would agree. So uh, let's call Glues uh, brought up a subject matter to a, a bunch of our friends. Um, we all have a friend and uh, his name is, we'll call him Bryce. And he doesn't live here. He lives over uh, the other side of the country. And... Um, what happened was 
he came in a few weeks ago, around three weeks ago, for an AE Pi uh, reunion. But the real reason was that he was invited by someone from his um, fraternity because his wife passed away. So he came in, and it was very close to Gluce's house, five minutes away. And um, Gluce found out about it through a Facebook post. And he then goes about telling the people that are around us, which was, uh, uh, what we'll call him Chip, Barry, and Rave, that, um, you know, he's very upset with Bryce for not informing him that there was this event. And when I spoke to Bryce about it, he said, what am I, his babysitter? Um, you know, he has the same rights um, uh, to to find out about these things. Uh, is he, if he goes out for, a, uh, you know, eggs, is he supposed to tell him that, you know, there's a salmonella virus going on? So there was this whole battle that he thought he was slighted about that. And, um, you know, he, uh, uh, Gloos was also... Um, his father was, was sick for those three weeks also. Uh, Mike didn't really know that. So there was this whole battle. What was, um, what was Bryce's obligation to tell a friend in New York about an AE pie party that it's a, that he did not create. He was just the, um, guest of it. That's, that's the one that I like to pose to the group. There's another one, um, We'll call this person Locke. Uh, Locke um, uh, went out to see Bryce's um, uh, son's bar mitzvah last year. And that was across country from New York to California. And uh, they enjoyed it. Uh, Obviously, um, Locke was very happy to get the invite, gave a very nice present, and enjoyed the simcha. Well, this past September, Locke had his daughter's Bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah here in New York, and Bryce had to write back that I'm sorry, I'd love to come, but I can't. I'm doing a major speech for this uh, corporate entity that I run. It wasn't like he was going to a hockey game or anything, um, but he sent he sent a very very nice gift, and um, you would think that would be the end of it, but um, unfortunately, Locke um, now has a a hard on for Bryce because. Um, he went to his bar mitzvah, but he didn't go to his daughter's bar mitzvah. So we had this whole thing, and we like to know your sense of the social etiquette, or uh, or is this just a little bit of a nonsense? We're going to throw that back over to Rhea, <laughs> because uh, there was a lot there on Lark and Bryce. And, Bryce and, and Lark, Lark and Bryce. Yes. So what helped me bring it together, Scott, was uh, the feelings uh, that maybe Rhea and I have on social etiquette that uh, if someone does for you, do you need to do back for them? Sort of. And, and, and the final thing was um, a lot of people watch the show. And Rhea, you came up actually also. First, someone said, well, let's have these two people fight it out on the Dean Bluckman show. I, I swear to you, I have a text. And then um, there was another text by um, Chip that uh, let's see how Rhea could instigate this. Because obviously uh, he's been listening to the show and knows Rhea's personality. So I, I, think, I, I, I swear to you. I'll, I think I'll take that would text. be a great show for them all to come on here. And protect Let the innocent. Let fight, them fight right. it out. Right. And then we have Rhea over there in the United Kingdom uh, to I, uh, be, she could be judge and jury. I think it would be a ratings bonanza. So, It'd be hot. So before we we make that invitation, what, do you have any thoughts about this, Rhea, and how this could benefit, the, of course, the Dean Blackman show? <laughs> we have to have self-interest in this. I don't really know what you said. I had a load of names. <laughs> well, I, I, the names were made up uh, as close as possible to protect the innocent. Darling, can you just make it real simple and say the way it is? No, I can't because I can't use their names right now. Not their names, but what what's the problem exactly? Basically, on the first problem is that, um, you know, one of our friends, a mutual friend, a good friend of mine, came out to New York to an AE Pi reunion that they're all part of, but didn't mention that it was an AE Pi party to this person. His father just passed away, by the way, and he feels slighted that that he didn't even get the complimentary phone call. He, the person from uh, California did not create the party. He was an in, invitee to the party, 
And it, the purpose of the party was really to pay the respects to this person whose wife, young wife, passed away. And like a two for one, they also created a reunion at a bar. And so this person whose father passed away felt like he got slapped in the face that he was informed about that. So that's the first of the two. Okay, well, I feel for him if he feels, you know, um, rejected, as it were. I guess that's the right word. I don't know. But if th- there could be underlying issues, I would need to put them into therapy, to be honest, Scott. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think that's a good uh, point. And, and, and I, I'm going to try to get them on and see if we could uh, uh, solve this amongst all of us. The le- Scott, I've, yes. got a, I've got a better example maybe to help Rhea with this. Sure. Okay, because... Your your examples and your discussion here has to do with uh, what is proper etiquette. Exactly. So let me let me give this uh, type of an example. Uh, say uh, uh, your daughters uh, your daughters will be getting married one day. God okay. forbid. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's say uh, Brooke uh, Brooke gets married sure. and you have a, a big wedding for Brooke. You spent a lot of money. And uh, as uh, as they all do, the envelopes come in and you go back. And that night uh, you start opening uh, up the envelopes with gifts. And wow, that was pretty good. Or uh, that was high. That was low. Wasn't expected. Right. <laughs> and all that stuff <laughs> that takes place. Yes. Okay, It's a tally. Okay. It's a tally. And then you're close with uh, Brooks, uh, f- you know, friends, parents and everything yes. like that. And uh, a year or two later, uh, all of a sudden, Brooks friends start getting uh, married. And they start you. You start attending uh, the weddings with uh, your daughter, and uh, you know it's it's a situation uh, that uh, you know. Do you have to give the same monetary gift that you were given? Exactly. Okay. So that's that's a that's a better example, maybe, to give Rhea that. Uh, do you do what you want to do, or I mean, you know, I've heard examples where you know sometimes people uh, don't give gifts at all. Right. And uh, and you gave them a gift, so uh, I think. And also, I think your your focus has to you, what you're trying to bring up is what's uh, whether it's a wedding, a bar mitzvah, or anything in life. What's proper, you know, what's proper etiquette? Well, I, I think that's more for the the bar and bar mitzvah one. The second one, you know, if you go to one and you don't go to the other because of an excuse, I think that's the one. Right. The first one really is, hey, um, I was invited. You were invited. Um, is it my job to babysit you to tell you? Do I have to tell ten other people from AEPI? What's other people's responsibilities? So you, right. you're right on the second one. Uh, right. it, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Ria, maybe in your world, in your culture, uh, it's uh, screw you and uh, I'll do what I want to do. <laughs> There's no such thing as proper etiquette. Don't be hurt or don't be offended and just do what you want to do. Am I right? I think there's there is social etiquette and expectations, isn't there, ingrained? And usually, whoever was hosting whatever event, somebody would be charged with the invite. So, the problem shouldn't be with any attendee. It should be whoever was organising it. Exactly. If he was one of his staff, I would definitely have a problem, Dean. He, she, no, she, she, she hit the nail on, on uh, perfectly. Okay, but I do want to ask her if she's if she is uh, invited to a wedding and she attends that wedding. Okay, and she has a wedding and she has a gift. She gives a gift. A gift, and okay. and, and that person now doesn't come to her wedding, but gives a gift. But gives a gift. So I want to do the same analogy. But do both. Uh, they both do give both gifts. analogies. Yeah, they both give gifts. Okay, so but how, but the how, other person didn't go to. Uh, Rhea's daughter or son's wedding. Right. That's the analogy. Okay, so how would you feel, Rhea? But there was an excuse. Well, do you know what? I'm a bit different. I'm a bit odd. <laughs> um, I probably wouldn't do that. I might meet the person, lean in, give them a kiss on the cheek, both sides, and say, darling, I would sh- sooner show my love with my actions throughout a lifetime rather than a single gift. And I really don't like the idea of chopping down a tree to produce a card to say I love you. I'd like to think that my actions speak louder than a card. So would you then, if you were doing a conference that weekend and you couldn't go to your best friend's daughter's wedding, um, how would you handle that? Would you just say, a, um, listen, I would love to, but I just can't get, this is a major commitment. It's not like I'm going out to lunch. How would you handle that? 
I would probably, if I knew people there, I'd say take a laptop and I'll video in. <laughs> <laughs> Better than that, as the show comes to a close, I want to say to Scott, bring these guys on on the show and let's uh, let's battle this out on the show and uh, Rhea and I will participate. Okay, and, uh, I am going to... Rhea will be the final person okay, uh, that, that, that'll uh, bring closure to it. I think this would be great and I will mention it to them um, after the show and I think it would be a great episode. Okay, Any, this was a great show. Anything, absolutely. Anything else from you, Rhea, that you want to talk about? Yeah, no, um, no, not really. We've kind of done the time. I'd say myself um, and the way I live my life is to do for people to do what makes them happy. As soon as you begin to look after somebody else's happiness, I believe you lose your own. So if you do what makes you happy and you're a happy person, you spread good vibes. And I think that's a nice thing. So that's the way I go about life. And um and that's if someone asked me, that is what I would say, you know, just do what makes you happy, you know. And if you start to uh, encroach on your own happiness to please somebody else, I think maybe question that to see if that's a good move. But as always, it's love and peace to everybody. Rhea, that is beautifully said, uh, prophetic, and that's how I try to live my life and i thank you for saying that that's really great. i agree ria couldn't have said it any better I, I agree with her a hundred percent so on that note i want to thank you both for a great show and to our listening audience out there thanks for listening and uh, once again a happy and healthy new year to everybody uh everybody should try to uh like us on facebook hit the subscribe uh, button on the show's youtube channel uh, you could also find all our shows, prior shows, on iTunes. If you'd like to share your story, ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to deanbleckman.com and email me directly. I would like to thank all my listeners for being with us today. From all of us at The Dean Blackman Show, have a great day. You've been listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.